That, that's one thing that I wanted to ask you. I feel like time is passing. You know, the, you know we've had some conversations since you made the, the switch and, uh, and you had to be really careful about what you said and when you said it. But I feel like as more time goes by, and I feel like there's nothing that I could ask you that would, your answer would be any more offensive than calling Baptist trans. You know what I mean? So I feel like you are, you are, you already stepped as far into it as you possibly can. So at this point, I feel like everything, everything's free game. You could be trans or you could just be a faithful Christian, which means you have to baptize your babies and be pregnant. <laughs> Those are the only two choices. That's it. Those are two options. Yeah, you're a pedo baptist or you are transgender. Yeah. Did I stutter? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Jason Farley, he was like, was like, wait, but did you say, yes, I did. Yeah, that, I mean, it, part of it's just the, the rowdy, people aren't used to the rowdy fight, laugh, feast kind of uh, Christian culture. So they're not like, it's like when a bunch of guys are in a room and they're sparring and wrestling, uh, every now and then somebody gets hit with an elbow and gets a black eye. And then what you do when you're, when you're men uh, and Christian men is you say, oh man, you got me good, but that was a cheap shot. Next time, please don't do that. And then you move on. You know what I mean? It's just like that, you know, when, I, when I'm flying solo with, you know, preaching, of course, but then also podcasting, um, when, you're, when you're sitting by yourself looking at a camera with notes in front of you and your thoughts organized, um, there's just not as many casualties. But, uh, but I think that's p- part of it is not just, it's not just a doctrinal issue, but it's a philosophical issue in terms of just podcasting with a group of friends that fight and laugh and feast together. Like it's just, you know what I mean? Just certain things are going to, it's just, it's just different. There are pros. I think there are some strong pros to that, uh, to that style. And I think there are cons. And one of the cons is that every now and then somebody might say that, uh, that, um, Baptist cause transgenderism (laughs) every now and then. What do you think? I just I think if people don't want to if people don't want to watch cross politic don't watch cross politic I think I think all the guys like watching cross politic right. um, you're not no they have never made the claim that you're sitting down and opening up Herman Bob Inc they've never made the claim that you're for my Reform Baptist brothers they've never made the claim that you're opening up Nehemiah Cox like those kind of great and glorious articulations are there but sure I mean I have no issue with guys getting on a podcast and you know doing a dialogue kind of form that's not as crisp and clean as um as sometimes american evangelicals um like it right so i think that was you know yeah there's a lot going on uh with what happened in that kind of deal you also have the covenant thing i find the we've been you know i've been to fight laugh feast before together and kind of had this conversation many times you you the camaraderie is very, very thick and strong there. And people know it, like people feel it. Um, and that, that's, there, that's going on here in Moscow too. There's a, there's a interesting unity among the Christians here. And that, that's the covenantal kind of thing. Like you start to say, well, this is my brother. Um, and it's, it's pretty tangible that this is my brother. And sometimes I think that's lost in translation when you're um, between people on the internet, they don't, Yeah. not only the, the dialogue that's going on, but they don't realize like, you know, how thick and strong the, um, not only the fellowship, yes, but like, this is very strong. I think this is what the guys try to communicate after in their follow-up. They're like, you understand, like you can come to the Lord's table with us. We all come to the Lord's table together, mm-hmm. um, which is a kind of a different idea than, what happens across that Westminster second London divide. Right. Uh, there's, there's a thing there. Which well, because is related it's, to- it's a one way stream and not a two way street. Like the, the Presbyterian just practically by nature of their position and their view of the covenant can more practically and easily accommodate a Baptist believer at the Lord's table um, in, in baptism, right? If you have a, a credo Baptist family that's a member of Christ Church and say, we, we don't want to baptize our kid, we want to wait for a credible profession of faith, the Presbyterian can say, disagree, but okay. You know what I mean? It doesn't cause them to, you know, their conscience to be bound, the pastors, to where they feel like they have to deny membership or anything like that. It's just, and I, I, and I don't think, personally, I don't think it's because Presbyterians are more charitable in terms of their uh, character. I think it's just the nature of that, their theological position. It is the more um, 
practically accommodating position because it's not a two-way street between the 1689 and the Westminster. It is a one-way stream, and I am 1689, but it's a one-way stream, and the, and the Presbyterians are upstream, so to speak, uh, to where it's like, okay, we, we hold this position, and we can accommodate that. And, and it, but it doesn't, which is why you have, you know, like someone like Mark Dever that won't serve Ligon Duncan, the Lord's Supper in his service, um, you know, it, because of his <laughs> Baptist, you know what I mean? Like that's a commonly know. known position. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that is the deal. And both people are being consistent in their, their outflows of the theological structures, you know? So, right. and, uh, man, this is like when it, uh, this was a weird, uh, it's a personal anecdote, but you know, I was raised in a Southern Baptist church and I said in my follow-up, you know, look guys, um, not only was I Baptist like 10 minutes ago, but I was, um, I used to be an American, like the American Baptist variety, not the second London covenantal uh, variety. And I said, I still get a hankering to do an altar call sometime. In the, <laughs> in the, <laughs> um, I think every, everyone loves these, this American Baptist culture. Like every, everybody's got an American Baptist grandmother. Right. And uh, it's, there's so many beautiful things about it. Gospel straight up the middle things about it. And when, um, when the shift happened and I, you know, covenant, uh, the covenantal catastrophe of things shifting around, it was weird because it was more, um, it was this weird um, opening up of like, I love my Baptist brothers um, just as much as I did when I was a Baptist, if not more and appreciate their consistency and appreciate the fight. Um, so that was a weird, that was a weird shift uh, when it happens. And some of it is just looking at Baptist identity, even as, um, you know, they're sons of the separatist Puritans. That's what the, that's what the real reformed Baptists are. And, you know, you have this fight in Baptist world between the Anabaptists uh, of the Reformation and then the sons of the Puritans in England that were the particular Baptist, Reform Baptist, but that trajectory was Roman Catholic Church, um, uh, Church of England, pollutions, you had the Puritans, you had Puritans that wanted to stay in the Church of England and purify it, you had Puritans that wanted to separate from the Church of England and purify it, and then of those separatist Puritans, right. you have you have the Reformed Baptists who are the sep you know, who are the separatists of the separatist Puritans, that's their, that's their position, and they do this, um, in order to keep a pure church, regenerate church membership. And I think I read somewhere, this is early 1600s, um, when you have the first the first um, Reformed Baptist church, you might say, particular Baptist church there in England. Uh, but I think I read somewhere that Jeremiah Burroughs, the Puritan Jeremiah Burroughs, paper mm -hmm. Baptist, um, blessed those who, who went to do it. I can't remember where, but I remember just coming across it at some point. And I thought, well, that's an awesome moment of unity. And right. there's still a ton of unity. But the impulse of that, um, of the Reformed Baptist really is like, hey, we can't baptize these infants because we're bringing them into the church. And if we bring unregenerate people into the church, we're going to pollute the church. And the church is the pillar and buttress of the truth. And so this is a, this is a big deal. And um, so to be in that camp and think that way, uh, I understand what Reformed Baptist brothers that know what they're they're thinking about, how they would think about what happened when I came like, oh, you, you just stepped from the separatist Puritan position um, to more of a Puritan within the church tradition. And that feels like a, um, a corruption of the church, which is eventually going to erode the gospel being preached on earth. Um, but it's weird because when you make that shift, you go from, um, like you said, like saying on principle and in love, I, I, we won't we won't have certain of these pedo Baptist people at the table because we don't think they're baptized, right? Um, and then you shift to this weird. It's like, oh boy, now um, now as a minister of the gospel in here at Christ Church in Moscow, we have. Um, Pado Baptists and Credo Baptists there, and they come, and it's it's a weird shift where it's not as um, it's just not as much of a thing right. um, once you once you make that shift over. 
So trying to find ways to communicate, um, that is important. Like how, how do we, you know, how do you talk knowing how your brothers are thinking that are still in the reform Baptist world, all of that, but it's a little bit of the background of the ship. Yeah. Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. Thanks for sticking around. I've got an important announcement to make. That's the Theonomy and Postmillennialism Conference 2023. May 5th, 6th, and 7th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Theonomy and Postmillennialism. We've got the speakers that we've already had lined up. That's Dr. James White, Dr. Joseph Boot, Dr. Gary DeMar, non-doctor Pastor Joel Webin. But we also have a bonus speaker, and that is Dale Partridge from Real Christianity. Perhaps you've heard of him. If not, you should start listening to his podcast. It's fantastic. Dale Partridge is going to be joining our team. We're going to have live panels on Friday night and Saturday night where you'll be able to write in questions and get them answered. We're also going to have a catered barbecue Texas style barbecue meal on Friday. That's a part of your registration fee. All that is covered. So you need to get that. This is how you do it. Go and register right now at rightresponseconference.com. Again, that's rightresponseconference.com. God bless.